welcome once more to another afternoon of uh, IFA Galaxy's webinar on learnings. So we're going to have uh, uh, another uh, uh, brilliant speaker who's going to talk to us about communication in these times of crisis. Friends, you know, we will, uh, as advisors, we will do all the basics very well, which is we will do the need analysis for the client, select the right products, give them the right investment solutions, do all of it. But it is a simple matter of communication. If we fail, that is where the maximum impact the client will feel both positive and negative. Especially in case of times when we are going through times like these COVID times and especially in these, uh, in these cases where some of these investments aren't doing very well, communication is the key. And uh, that's why we have today uh, a communication specialist, Vinay, to talk to us. Vinay uh, Pushpakaran is a speaker, sales coach, entrepreneur, public speaking mentor. He's a member of the uh, Professional Speakers Association of India, coming with over 15 years of corporate experience in marketing and education, and having worked in seven countries across three continents. He believes that Persuasive speaking is the game-changing skill for tomorrow. He curates specialized learning programs to help individuals and teams speak, persuade, and succeed. He has transformed educationists and corporate professionals into communication leaders in their respective domains. Vinay's mission is to enable and empower professionals by introducing them to... <coughs> sorry introducing them to strategic and life-defining skills of tomorrow, which is empathetic communication and public speaking in a format that they understand and connect with. He heads future impact learning that provides communication skill training for students at some of the leading schools and colleges in India. With no more ado, I'd like to uh, introduce you to uh, Vinay and over to you Vinay and uh, look forward to hearing all your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Babu. Just wanted to uh, reconfirm once if uh, my, uh, uh, I'm, I'm audible, my audio is well? Absolutely, perfect. Great, thank you. Thank you for that uh, amazing introduction. Uh, uh, you know, I, I feel like the guy who walks into bat after Dravid gets out. <laughs> so, uh, just to, uh, uh, share a little bit about uh, uh, the session today and also um, just to add on to uh, a few things that you know because uh, I would want to uh, know each one of you personally and uh, I would also want all of you to know me as well because uh, this short time I want to share some of the insights which I feel would be useful for all of us during this time of uh, crisis. Um, can I use um, uh, the screen sharing Babu? Is it uh, just Oh, okay. Uh, Vinay, uh -huh. we have a one-hour window in okay. which uh, we would uh, uh, love to hear what you have to say for about 40-45 minutes. Sure. And post which uh, many people would want to have some Q&A with you. So sure. if you could allocate about 15 minutes for that, that will be great. Yeah. Great. Yes. Thanks. Communication during a crisis, that is the topic uh, that uh, I would be speaking about right now. But uh, before that, uh, just to uh, let you know what, uh, you know what I do and a little bit about myself, I'm uh, uh, Vinay Pushpakaran and uh, I'm a professional speaker, a sales coach and a communication uh, mentor. I also run a venture, Future Impact Learning, which works with, uh, st with, with students and corporates. Uh, I'm a non-resident Malayali who was born and brought up in Delhi and now settled in uh, Chennai. So I enjoy my Nadan Sadhya as much as I love my Aluka Parantha and Talapagatti Biryani. So I try to make a balance of all the three amazing worlds. And uh, when I was a child, I was very fascinated with Superman. I always felt that, um, uh, you know, it would be so amazing if you have the, the most amazing superpower of, you know, flying where I want uh, and, uh, you know, doing amazing things and saving the world. In fact, I even had a blue, uh, uh, you know, a 
blue body hugging suit and a red underwear yes mm, you know i being a superman was the most ultimate superpower for me um but a decade and a half into a corporate uh, career which uh, uh, spanned across sales marketing and training i realized that uh, there was uh, one more superpower which is much more powerful and which can change the world one that can empower and inspire people one that doesn't need a suit or a mask and one that each and every one of us has at our disposal communication vinay can you make the screen larger big uh, full screen can you make it full screen Fine. Okay. Great. Communication, which is seven percent of what we say and ninety-three percent of how we say it, it can make a world of a difference to somebody's life. Just the way we speak, just the way we communicate to that person. we'll get back to the presentation but i wanted to speak about our current situation that we are facing right now today we are facing a crisis that nobody prepared us for 6 months back if somebody told us that we would be spending the entire summer of 2020 in front of our laptops and um, uh, wearing masks to go out to buy essentials we would have recommended them to a very good counselor but that is our reality today that's what we are living today this pandemic has changed our lives our professions and our business and that is what a crisis often does it strikes us out of the blue and attacks everything that was status quo in our lives all of us are facing this crisis in our own way and trying to figure things out in fact um, communication expert uh, timothy coons has a very interesting idea on crisis he says there are three kinds of crisis number 1 a victim crisis a victim crisis is a crisis where where the business or the professional is not responsible for the situation but he is in it an example would be the pandemic that we are facing right now natural disasters the tsunami all these are situations which were which the business or the professional was not responsible for but we are having to deal with it in the year 1982 uh, something happened in the us seven people died of poisoning there was one thing common to those seven people they all had consumed tylenol a few hours before they died this incident sparked an outrage across the united states tylenol tylenol was named as the killer of those seven people johnson and johnson faced a crisis which they were never prepared for it just hit them out of the blue this shifted the entire uh, momentum this shifted the entire public perception that johnson and johnson enjoyed till that day against it a crisis that came out of the blue and room and the the rumor spread like wildfire that the problem was in the in the tablet the problem was in tylenol in reality it was a mentally deranged individual who had actually tampered uh, the tablets in various stores and injected them with potassium cyanide johnson and johnson could not have done anything to avoid it at that point of time but they were caught right in the middle now this is this is this story is a perfect example of a uh, of a victim crisis the second kind of crisis i'll just share the screen for a moment the second kind of crisis is an accidental crisis now in an accidental crisis the professional or the business is responsible for the crisis yes but it is not intentional the company or the person or the or the service provider would have uh, 
thought about something else or intended something else, but that resulted in a crisis. A very interesting um, incident happened once again. Uh, these things happen a lot more in the US, but I'm sure we have stories um, plenty like that in India as well. JC Penney, uh, the famous retail brand in the US, launched a new kind of a kettle. Now, they, it, it, it was a very, very uh, brand new, it's a, a bells and whistles kettle and they put up a huge billboard right on the Seattle highway. And uh, one, out of the blue, out of the blue, one gentleman took a picture of that and put it on reddit.com that the kettle, the image of the kettle portrayed in that looked very, very close to Adolf Hitler. That one message spread wildfire. The message spread across and people started posting. There, there were more than a million views in less than an hour that uh, J.C. Penny was anti-Semitic. J.C. Penny was uh, uh, promoting Adolf Hitler. The, uh, the, the dangerous N-word, the Nazi c comes into the picture. Now, that is a, that is a, this is a perfect example of an accidental crisis when the... Uh, uh, the cause of the crisis lies right with the organization, but it's not intentional, it's accidental. The third kind of crisis is a preventable crisis. Now, this is the kind of crisis which is caused or propagated by the organization or the individual. And yes, they also intend, the, the action was also intended, but the results were not in their favor. Now, this is the most dangerous kind of a crisis. I will not go further in detail because right now we are dealing with a victim crisis. So we'll go focus more on how do we handle uh, our communication in the time of a crisis, which is for which we are not responsible. So uh, a small example, because I'm sure, uh, uh, you know, you'd be curious of where a preventable crisis would have happened. Uh, well, one, one very uh, interesting story is of uh, JetBlue, the airline. Now, JetBlue uh, in um, the year 2007 or 8, I think, I think it was 2007, um, there was a snowstorm happening uh, in Philadelphia and uh, uh, JetBlue did, uh, and uh, all the airlines uh, uh, cancelled or postponed their flights, but JetBlue said, we don't believe in postponing or cancelling, so we will fly. What happened is that uh, they had 11 aircraft stuck on the tarmac without being allowed to take off. In fact, uh, uh, they had thousands of passengers which were stuck inside the aircraft. In fact, one aircraft, in one aircraft, uh, the passengers were on the tarmac in the aircraft for close to 10 hours. So when they were finally let out, they, it was a crowd of absolutely angry, frustrated people pulling out their hair and not know and, and ranting about it everywhere. This is a perfect example of a crisis which was propagated and which was, I mean, they intended to fly, they felt they could do that, it was overconfidence, but it was preventable. This is a preventable crisis. But what we are right now in the middle of, it's a victim crisis. This is a uh, natural calamity. This is a calamity which has struck us and in this crisis time, as service providers, we have a higher responsibility. Higher responsibility. We have a higher um, duty to take that, go that extra mile, and take that extra step when it comes to our clients. I have a question here. Now I will just uh, stop the screen sharing, and I have a question here, and uh, I want all of you to please answer this on the chat. I want to uh, ask you: What do you think is the first? most primary difference between a service provider and a product provider or a product business? Um, feel, trust, accept. Somebody who's providing a service and somebody who's providing a product what is the most service providers personalized service? Absolutely. Emotion. Service itself. Product has a physical. Yes, service is intangible. Hence emotional. Product or service. After and before. Oh, yes, absolutely. Wonderful. 
the one single difference between a service provider and a product provider is that when we are providing a service to a customer to a client there is a there is a elongated period of human interaction yes we we get to spend quality time with the client there is a human interaction involved here and that is why as a service provider the absolutely tangible and non tangible and yes empathy empathy is absolutely a continuous process of service yes very true when we are providing a service to a customer there is an experience involved there is an experience involved which is a human to human whether we are providing a service uh, whether we are providing whether we are consulting for somebody or whether we are training somebody or whether we are providing a financial service or we are, uh, or we are providing uh, even a service that in uh, counseling all these kinds of services involve a continuous period of human interaction there is an experience involved here which is created by a human for a human and that is where communication plays such a vital important role mm, there is a, somebody mentioned that there is a break in the video is it uh, uh, i just want to reconfirm is it there or it's fine oh okay great thank you yes that is what sets a service provider different so there is a higher responsibility on us in terms of our communication and that is what i am going to speak about right now uh, in our uh, uh, in the methods of or in the different kinds of crisis that we saw there is one thing that uh, comes across very very strongly that in a crisis we do not uh, often expect it coming and we are seldom prepared for it we are in a position where we have to uh, uh one second please yes i will just zoom down here there is okay um okay Uh, screen share is somehow not working no problem yeah uh, so uh, when we are looking at communication in a, during a crisis there are six six rules of communication which can make the experience of our customer or of of our client Vinay, you have put it on mute. You have put Vinay, it on. Vinay, mute. Vinay, Vinay, one second, Vinay. So I kind of I'll just unmute you. Uh, Vinay, you can unmute it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, am I unmute? Vinay, I will. I will sometimes have to mute everybody. So sometimes you will have to unmute. No, no problem. I'll, I'll I'll mute sir. Anyone who comes in, just I'll mute. Don't worry. Babu sir. Okay, great. Yeah. Yes, I'm. Uh, sure. Okay. 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 Thank you, Shobha. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yes. The first and foremost. Now I'm going to share uh, six tips of communication, which are very, very relevant for us as service providers, which can help us tide through this crisis. Yes, we could not have prevented this crisis. Yes, we could not have seen this coming. Nobody would have seen this coming. but now that it's here it's up to us to face it head on and when we face it head on as service providers it is our responsibility to make sure that we are the first line of defense when it comes to the crisis and the area of our expertise as far as the crisis hitting our customer is concerned and in this situation the first step that we take in terms of our communication is that number 1 is a p the p stands for people we have to prioritize people over opportunities and business 
a crisis is a time for us to tell our clients tell our stakeholders and also our employees some of us here have teams some uh, we uh, and sometimes we are very proactive and we are we take the initiative to share information with our clients and our stakeholders but sometimes we often forget that uh, uh, we have a team and our team also uh, needs and deserves the same level of communication and clarity so the number one the, the first tip is p which is people we have to prioritize people we that this is the time when we reach out to our clients we reach out to our uh, stakeholders and reassure them that we care for them this is uh, our first the first line of communication has to be that you know are you doing well are, are things okay with you how is your uh, you know how how is your family how is your business how are, how are you managing your cash flow how are you doing the first step and the most important one prioritize people empathy comes into the picture here because it's our empathy that tells us that we are there we are, sta we are not standing across the table in the time of a crisis we move around the table and we stand next to our client that is that is the first and the first thumb rule of communication in a crisis people because without people there is no us without customers without clients there is no business and i am somebody who firmly believes in one thing that business is for people not the other way around the second the second rule is to be and and uh, friends this is something which is very very important and i would like to stress is the speed and the promptness i call it being proactive this is the second p being proactive now many a times what happens is that you know when crisis hits we are completely shaken up we are not in a position to communicate effectively we are trying to figure things out and there is a delay there is a delay in the in the in the communication from our end to our stakeholders and our clients in a normal situation that may or may not matter but in a crisis it is all about the speed we have to be proactive and we have to be there to uh, yes people uh, we have decided that yes people are our priority but the people should know that you know we that they are our priority we have to be the first to share as much information as available now again this is important sometimes we sacrifice accuracy for speed no i am not at all uh, supporting or propagating that we should sacrifice accuracy for speed in fact accuracy is one of the six rules that i am going to be talking about so speed is very important we have to be proactive in sharing the information that we have and which is with a high level of accuracy yes the information may not be too much we may not have the entire uh, solution to a problem or the entire uh, uh, the the changing economic market right now we may not be in a position to uh, share the complete details without study and without spending time yes but what we know for sure with a reliable amount of accuracy we should we have to be the first to share being the second p is proactive the first p people the second p proactive we have to be proactive we have to be the first to take the initiative we should not have to wait for the customer to contact us and ask for us we have to be the first one to take the phone up and dial the number that yes the, the situation is here but i am there for you and this is the information which i have and i will keep you updated about more progress that happens and once again the important word reassure the customer is not often expect not ask, expecting us to find a solution for a, a crisis all the time the customer gets in touch with us for two reasons number one the customer wants to know that we are there number two the customer is looking for information which he or she will not have now what happens if we are not giving them that information do you think they will wait for us to share that information absolutely no they will find that information on their own google whatsapp groups assumptions misinformation confusion all these things are surrounding 
every individual during a crisis. These are all things which are floating in the air above us during a crisis. When we delay, all these things start entering the system and then we are fighting against that. So be proactive. The second uh, thumb rule is let's be proactive for our customers. The third, again, which I just mentioned, accuracy. Even if you're sharing one point of information, make sure it's accurate. Make sure it's reasonably accurate. Make sure that it is not something which is off the cuff or which comes from a WhatsApp forward or a, you know, a PDF document which is not verified. Even if it's one piece of information, that's fine. Share it. Share it accurately. That is the kind of information which the customer is looking from us, which the stakeholder is expecting from us. That is where we make a difference that, yes, we shared one information. We may not have the entire solution. We may not have the entire correct prediction of how the market is going to be. We may not be able to tell how the stock market will be a, a month from now. Nobody knows even things from day after tomorrow. If Mr. Modi decides to extend the lockdown, uh, we, the entire predictions and everything might just go for a toss that we don't know. But please share what we know. The third rule is an A, which is accuracy. So the first two are two Ps. The third one is accuracy. The fourth now, this is important because sometimes we, uh, we don't, uh, we know this, it's there, we know it's available to us, we know it's at our disposal, but we often ignore it, we often overlook it because we feel that it's not really needed. The, the fourth one is a C, communication channels. How many communication channels do each one of us use here? What do we, what all communication channels do we use? Yes, we do we send out, a, uh, we send out, we, we use WhatsApp. WhatsApp is right now the number one communication tool in India. Uh, that's, that's what statistics say. But uh, what, uh, we WhatsApp, we make a phone call. We, to, uh, yes, tweet. Oh, yes, absolutely, sir. Yes, tweet, email, tweet, email, and social media. These are all the communication channels that we have at our disposal. Are we using all of this in a crisis? Or are we just sending out one WhatsApp message every week? When there is, when we are sharing information openly, the information that we have, the reassurance that we have, do not restrict it to just one channel. Let it be coherent and consistent across multiple channels. That when multiple channels hit a receiver, the first customer behavior is that, you know, reliability and trust comes when you see the same thing across multiple channels. The brain processes it much later that it's all coming from the same person, but the brain processes it as the same information coming from four or five different sources at four or five different times, even though the sending, it's all coming from you, the service provider, it's coming from you, the company, but still it's coming from four or five different places. That reassures a person and builds reliability to your information. They'll start, people start looking forward to your updates. People start depending on your updates to take decisions or to be informed. Not every tip, not every suggestion or advice will be taken. In fact, maybe even 50% may not even be taken. But the customer agrees and the customer acknowledges that you have taken an effort to share an advice. You have taken an effort to share a suggestion. Please use multiple channels to do that. If you have shared a particular tip, please share that through an email. Please share that through a, a WhatsApp. These are all the extra mile that we go for our customer during a crisis. This is the extra mile that we go for them. So use multiple communication channels. It makes a huge difference. The fifth, the fifth thumb rule, and this one is important here, is humor. Now, where does humor come into play in a crisis? Well, humor is, uh, yes, absolutely, sir. Yes, re reiterate our view through various channels. Absolutely, it makes a huge difference. From a customer point of view, it makes a big difference. Yes, now humor, where does humor? Now, in a crisis, it may happen that sometimes uh, a suggestion that we give, something may go wrong, a mistake can happen from our end. We are not perfect. We are all human beings and we all make mistakes and we all learn. Sometimes when we make a mistake, we have to have the sense of humor to admit it and we should always make up an effort to correct it. Now, uh, I shared the story of JC Penny and the kettle, right? Uh, a while back. Now, uh, let me just share the picture 
picture that was put up on the hoarding. I'm sure uh, some of you are uh, thinking about how, what that picture looked like. I will just share that picture quickly. And before we move on to the next point, this is the picture. Somebody actually, this is the picture of the kettle and somebody actually put this picture on Reddit and shared it all over and this picture actually went viral. Now, what did JC Penny do? JC Penny immediately put out a tweet, a very simple tweet. It said, if we really intended to have the design look like somebody, we would have chosen a snowman or somebody more fun. It caught the attention, it caught the attention of the media. People realized that yes, they made that, and, but then yeah, it's been a mistake. Right after that tweet, within a couple of days, that hoarding was removed, but the kettle was actually sold out. That message, the tweet from JC Penny was complete, yes, absolutely. He, they diluted the situation and they used sense of humor. Now, sense of humor is, is good or sense of humor can be used in a victim crisis to reassure or in an accidental crisis, in a preventable crisis, you cannot use sense of humor because that was intentional, your action was intentional, and using humor will only you know, piss your customer off or put your customer in a situation that, yes, this, the company or the professional it does not take the business or the customer seriously. So in an accidental crisis or a victim crisis, a sense of humor can be used successfully. At the, the fifth, the, so the fifth thumb rule is an H. The last, the last thumb rule or the last tip for communication in a crisis is that always, once the crisis tides over, every crisis will tide over and like this crisis will also tide over, this too shall pass and we will be seeing a new tomorrow uh, without the COVID threat hanging over us. What are we doing at that time? A post, a post crisis analysis and a post crisis discussion with the client, sometimes that's often taken for granted. But a post-crisis assessment makes sure that we are seen as we are seen as the entity that was there with the client before the crisis, through the crisis, and even after the crisis. That's that's the human factor that, that I was talking about. That's the part. Yes, we are with him before, through the crisis, and after the crisis. And that is with and so a post a post. Uh, crisis discussion, a, a, a short meeting, a short chat after the crisis is over, not about the business, not trying to create a new selling opportunity, basically to understand how he is doing now or how he or she is doing and how the business is actually moving, uh, uh, how, what plans he has for the future. How has this crisis affected him? How has this crisis changed his way of towards business? That is the, that is the one, one most important thing where we as service professionals have a huge advantage. We have the opportunity to sit right next to the customer and give him that customer experience, give him that experience that we are there with him and we are there for him. So once again, uh, one last time, I will uh, share the six tips of, or the six thumb rules of managing crisis. Number one, people, prioritize people over finding selling opportunities or business opportunities. Be proactive. Be the first, be the first to take the initiative and dial that number. Do not wait for, uh, do not wait to receive the call. Be the first to dial the number and make the call. Accuracy of information. Even if your information is not too much, even if you don't have a whole load of information, share what you have, but make, please make sure that it's accurate. Communication channels, please use multiple channels of communication to get the message across. Do not depend on just one channel. Uh, use social media effectively, use LinkedIn, use Instagram, use Twitter, wherever your customer is, use that. You have to go to where your customer is. Your customer will not access you where you are. 
So we have to be there where our customer is. Fifth one, humor. Use humor judiciously and effectively. Humor can, humor can, is, uh, is humor, the humor is rumored to save lives. So please use humor judiciously and effectively. <laughs> and finally, a post-crisis evaluation. Please always be there with the customer when the crisis is over. Yes, we have gotten through this as well. Now, how do we uh, move forward? What is, the, what is it that you have in your mind? Great. I wish you all the best. We will be in touch. A post-crisis evaluation is not about, uh, wait, uh, about jumping on for a business opportunity at the first available juncture. No. It's only about informing the customer that we are there. We were there before, we were there through, and we are there now, after. The th last, I would like to leave you with these last three words, the three most important words in communication during a crisis, which are important for all of us. Inform, reassure, and care. Inform your, inform your stakeholders, inform your team, inform your customers. Every piece of verified accurate information that comes from you is worth its weight in gold. Reassure them. Reassurance comes from being responsible about the language we use. A simple sentence that I think I heard somewhere that uh, they are arresting people who are going out during lockdown. This is something which I read in a WhatsApp message yesterday morning, by the way. I got a WhatsApp message in a group where somebody actually said that I have heard that, that uh, I heard from somewhere that they're arresting people who are going out during the uh, lockdown. Now that one message went out to 220 people in that group. Maybe 200 people would not care about it. But those 10 people who actually believe that and actually just spread the rumor and magnify that, that can ruin people, lives, businesses, and professions. So please inform with accuracy and with speed. Inform and reassurance. In times of crisis, reassurance is as powerful as hope. Please reassure people. Reassure people that good times or bad times, we are there with you. We we'll wait till the bad times are over, and we will there with, be with. We'll there. We'll be there with you when the good times come, and show people that you care. After all, the entire purpose of the C in the communication is to show the other person that there is a C in the care that we care for them. That's why communication is such a powerful superpower. Thank you very much, and. Uh, now I leave the forum open for uh, Q and A, um, and yeah. yeah, big part. Yes. Thank, thank you, Vinay, for that uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful, uh, you know, kind of a framework you've actually given us all. A framework that we can really follow in communicating with uh, the only regret I have is that when COVID lockdown was announced, you should have been the first speaker for us, right? It would have made a lot more sense. Of course, uh, uh, better late than never. So I, I would take it that way. Uh, but a few questions uh, uh, we will have, and uh, you know, uh, I would like to get started. If you can, you know, this you, you did mention about this fact that uh, uh, humor is a very powerful thing, especially because the the content is so serious. And and just to give a give you a perspective of our cause, our investment advice. One is, of course, there is a pandemic that uh, you know, everything is bad and people are dying and people may die and so on and so forth. The other thing is it is down. Hello. Yes. Stock market is down. Investment values are down. So there is also that that second fear, right? How would, how would you think humor may play a role when I talk to a customer? One is he's already scared for life. His existing investments that I had suggested to him also doing badly now. Is there a role, is there a way in which humor can be blended in something, in a conversation of this nature where everything looks very bad? 
Yes, yes, uh, that's a fantastic uh, question, Babu. Thank you. Uh, yes, I will answer that. Now, uh, using humor. Now, uh, humor can be used in different contexts and different situations. We all know that. But when we are using humor in a very the pandemic is a very serious situation. We are talking about uh, uh, plummeting uh, the stock market values. We are talking about uh, people suffering uh, cash flow issues and business issues. Everywhere we are seeing problems and people literally going through a recession, if I can use the word. In this situation, uh, humor it looks very out of place. But there is one thing that one kind of humor that always works in a crisis that is a humor that's directed at ourself. Self-deprecating humor, self-depreciating humor is the, is the best form of humor that is the safest form of humor in a difficult situation. When we are, uh, a simple example would be that when, you, uh, uh, in fact, again, this is, a, this is an incident that happened, um, I think with, uh, um, the company was, I, I, I think it was uh, Red Bull. Now, what happened is that, one of the social media managers of Red Bull, she was actually, uh, I think, under the influence of alcohol. And instead of putting up a tweet on her uh, on the on her private account, she put up a tweet on the company account, and that tweet was totally uh, weird, out of place, and it put out a message that, uh, yes, oh my God, uh, you know, we uh, this company has the employees who are sitting drunk on the job. Now this is a now the, this is a crisis. Now this is a situation where everybody in the company is absolutely upset. Right from the MD of the company to the CEO to the top management is getting messages from across the world that what is happening? You have drunk people on the job. What are you tweeting? The, now, the one option for the company could have been that to remove the tweet and send out an apology. That's the regular thing that you know that all of us would first of all think. But you know what the company did. They did not remove that tweet immediately. They kept the tweet for two days. But on top of that, they retweeted with a message. As a company, we are very, very sober. This individual was having a break and put it on the wrong handle. But we are very, very sober. <laughs> That's it. Now, yes, the, hu the humor was on them. They made a mistake. The humor was on them. <laughs> But that's okay. Now that is the kind of humor which actually wins people's hearts. In a time of crisis, we cannot make fun of somebody else. The, the humor should never be directed outward. In crisis, humor should always be directed inward. And that is the, and the most effective kind of humor is the one wherein we use the current situation and direct it on ourselves and, and deliver the punch. That's, that dilutes, everybody is under tremendous amount of pressure. We have all people around us. Everybody who suffers in this situation is a human being. And human beings go through emotions, go through stress. A, a, a comfortable, light conversation can literally change our moods, pump us up completely and make us feel amazing. And sometimes a, sim, a, a very, very short five-minute conversation laced with humor and a lot of reassurance is all that takes. So humor can definitely be used. I would recommend self-depreciating humor that's directed inwards, not outwards. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vinay. Vinay, we have a question from Ganesh uh, Ramamurthy. I'm going to read it out for you. What yep. if a crisis is understood as accidental by me, but preventable by my client? A perception mismatch. How will you can? It will always be like that. Every single accidental crisis is always perceived by the, by the audience or by the people as a preventable crisis. Uh, a simple example, uh, I, I, mean, I think last week we had the gas leak at, um, at the factory in Vishakapatnam. Yes. One thing which I, uh, you know, I, I was following that quite closely. I was reading the news articles about that. I did not find a... a a proactive step by the company, LG Polymers, to come out with a statement, take up ownership, and show that they cared for the first, I mean, even if it was, if it's you know, somewhere in a, in a tweet hidden somewhere, it doesn't really matter. It has to be, we have to be the first one to reach out and say that we care for the people. The factory is in a place which is surrounded by people and people have been affected. So we have to be the first one. The first uh, reassurance which I read was the chief minister of, uh, uh, promising out a, a compensation of a crore to the people who have died. I mean, that 
something on those lines should have been the the first step should have been a communication by the factory that you know we don't care about the factory we don't care about our business we care about every single life that was lost that if the fact the company did not prioritize people here a lot of companies go on the defensive and try to put up theories and put out test results that no this is you know they try to defend their stand that is not the time when a crisis has broken out that is not the time to defend because people do not believe you when you're defending yes they yes 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 they assured one crore to fam but unfortunately that message came a lot late the company should have the more, the crisis should have, as soon as the crisis happened it should have been immediately they should have gone ahead and uh, declared that that is the the speed and the promptness and the proactiveness is important there and we and the company has to prioritize that yes we are there for you we care for people more than the business and the equipment the the story that i spoke about in the beginning the tylenol example you know what johnson and johnson did johnson and johnson recalled close to stock worth 125 million dollars for no fault of theirs yes they 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 uh, they put out a 100000 dollar reward for the person who identifies who gets get in the in the cctv cam they found footage of the person actually tampering with the uh, with the tablets but they could have put out the footage and say see that's not our responsibility we are not here but what did johnson and johnson do they put out a country wide message please stay away from tylenol tylenol is our product but please stay away from it till we sort this out and we make sure that it's safe for you they said forget about everything else we are there and they recalled stocks worth 125 million dollars and then after that after a few months they relaunched tylenol with a tamper proof packaging they offered uh, a discount coupon for uh, for uh, people who trust uh, would buy that and they also put in their team to work along with the fbi and the fda to uh, find out who did that and just a small um, trivia on that till date that person has not been caught so oh. so the 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 important thing to remember the important thing to, for us to notice here is that even when an accidental crisis is seen as preventable it does not change our stance as a company or professional we our message is always that crisis has happened and we care for you we will do everything that it that's that's needed to make sure that you know you are out of this crisis we will do whatever we can from our end we are there for you that message has to go out immediately if it goes out after a week or a month it doesn't matter nobody cares it has to go out immediate proactive is the name of the game absolutely thank you thank you vinay we have another question uh sukumar it may backfire since we are in the series but i think that has been answered sukumar thank you good session seshagiri rao says how to communicate a negative message finally pradeep raja has this question how to communicate a negative message finally it has to deliver as a positive message how do you deliver a negative message uh, and make it appear as a positive message you know somebody has died so you can't go and say somebody has died but he is now being welcomed in the heaven of god right so it can't uh, you can't <laughs> so how do you how do you communicate a negative message with a positive spin that's the question okay uh, first thing i believe in the uh, age old sandwich method i always believe in the sandwich method and it it works it has worked for me 9.5 out of 10 times and the point 5 well that's uh, in the in the hands of the almighty but yes uh, the sandwich method is that when we have a bad news to be conveyed please sandwich it between two positive things now positive things is not looking at the bright side of it no that doesn't mean positive things a positive thing is that we start off first of all that is this a good time to talk to you do not go and dump a bad news on somebody's head we don't even without even knowing in what situation or what circumstances if if you know if somebody's had a, a fight at home with their spouse they are not in a position right now to handle a bad news on top of that no way so please ask the person are you you know to check with the, the first positive this is the this is the basic thing that we can do the first part of the sandwich is that you see if the person is in a position to receive that message or not if the person is not wait for a few minutes wait for an hour wait for half an hour and then convey that message make sure that the person is in a mindset to receive that bad message the negative message okay after that once the negative message has been delivered 
and again delivering the uh, the negative message please use words please use language which is which includes that one c which is very very important the last c care yeah if you're telling somebody that you know i uh, i was responsible for your i, I had borrowed your bicycle but uh, unfortunately it's stolen you know dude your bike just got stolen that does not have any care in it that i had to, you know i had borrowed your bike uh, i had uh, kept it very nicely locked but somebody broke the lock and the bike is stolen right now this is the same message being communicated in two different ways a lot of people a lot of us pick up the phone and say dude your bike is stolen yeah what do we do that is not that is that is that just shows lack of empathy and lack of care a bad news and then after that the second part of the sandwich the last part of the sandwich is that we sandwich it with an uh, with a a positive look towards oh, what do we do about it the last part is not about looking at the brighter side okay your bike is now stolen so it's a good opportunity for you to buy a car no that's not what you say at the end no never you'll be shot <laughs> no you never say that what you say is that okay uh, what all can we do to now get it back that's something we cannot help what can we do to take, get it back a solution is a positive message guys gentlemen a solution uh, ladies and gentlemen that a solution that we are proposing at the end is a positive part of the sandwich so please sandwich a negative message between two positive slices of bread and i can uh, assure you the sandwich will be good wow great uh ganesh ramurthy has another question ganesh is uh, hogging the limelight today vinay does it mean that we should own the crisis and apply the six tip shares just to clarify uh do not own the crisis own the situation please do not if 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 like for example let me take again the example of tylenol when the the mishap happened now what happened was responsible was uh, due to, uh, to a person tampering with the tablets so as johnson and johnson you do not have to go and say that yes it got uh, tampered it got because of us no that's not that you don't have to own up for something which is not the case own up for the situation that yes we are very sorry that the situation has happened and we will do everything in our uh, we will do even if it is not even if it is not our fault that's okay we don't care whose fault it is whether it's our fault or nobody or somebody else we don't care what we care is you you have been affected and we are there to support you in this you took an advice from another consultant and something went bad no problem please tell us how can i help you right now yes we we are not here to say that it's your fault that you know or it's my fault no situation is bad i am here to help you about it because i care about you so we do not we, we never own up for something that's not we own up for something that's our mistake for our lack of in our lack of foresight our lack of even if we overlook something that's our mistake the jet blue episode was something that they should have owned up and they did own up for that when virgin uh, virgin at lab when uh, virgin airlines galactic space flight crashed richard branson flew over right to the spot of the crash and gave a statement right there that he takes respond complete and full responsibility for this accident and he he made sure that the that the pilots who lost their lives the pilot who lost his life and his family would be complete uh, the, their families would be completely taken care of that is that is called being proactive he did not try to hide behind anything he just said and then he and then the the, the killer uh, move happened right after that you know what he did he act after that the message from virgin was very clear the mission to space goes unabated we cannot let the death of one of our we cannot let his death go in vain we are committed to our mission with more safety and more security to our team completely change the crisis to his advantage that's the power of communication superb superb uh, when i when i one more question coming from priya priya faxardi today everyone is flooded with messages in every category so how would you stand out in filtering what to and what not to communicate if you have a specific suggestion um okay when i uh, okay i am assuming that the uh, messages that we are talking about are the uh, incoming information that we are getting from all corners and so, some of which we intend to share with our clients or with our contacts and so on and so forth how do we pick up the what message to share what not to share 
I mean, even when even when it's not crisis time, even when it's a regular, I mean, you know, a, a normal scenario also, I think that every outgoing message from our end has our name on it. Which and if my name is there on a message, I stand for for the I stand for the uh, 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 the the honesty and the accuracy of that message. Otherwise, when because if we get a and and this is something which I am seeing day in and day out. Unfortunately, uh, the most abused form of communication is WhatsApp today, where messages in abundance are being shared on a daily basis, promotional messages, information, information which feels true information which you which we think is true unfortunately we share that information without even verifying it now how exactly do we uh, yes it's uh, when some when there is humor we share it that's fine but when we're sharing information can we can we at least uh, do the very very basic level of verifying it by verifying it a very simple the one what i do when i share information is that when i see a news uh, being shared on whatsapp to my group and i want to share it to my friends i always do at least one go i put that i take that main word put it in google and just do a very basic google search and see if it's actually true or not there are a couple of uh, whatsapp verifying services or apps also available there are a couple of websites also available which are uh, providing that whatsapp verification service so that's different but even a basic google search sometimes can tell us whether it's a, a true information or not people have lost lives because of misinformation being spread and in crisis misinformation unfortunately is the currency everybody has it in unlimited amounts because that's how many groups we have and that's how many messages we get on a day so we can't stop that we don't have a control of that and unfortunately the fomo the fear of missing out prevents us from logging out of the groups as well and of course so we have to stay in those groups and we are flooded with information so what do we do about that <laughs> we can't do much about that other than the fact that when we are sharing that information at least take that extra effort from our end to at least do one very basic level of information i do a google search every single time i share uh, an information which has come to me from somewhere else or I, if i'm sharing a link i will at least check that the link is not coming from a, a fake news site or a spam site no i always look for a uh, at least do one level of google search is what my suggestion is if we don't have time oh. for other stuff so verify whatever you're forwarding and probably add your name to that so that you know you take that little extra care to own that message yeah absolutely thank you so much sir vinay vinay chandar has a quick question how do we measure the effectiveness of our communication is there is there a way in which i can measure my effectiveness at 6 or chandar is at 6 he has to go to 9 so what does he have to do how do we know that we are in fact communicating more than required is it something that you gain over a period of time? Is there a is there a metric we can measure it with? Uh, there is something which I personally use because unfortunately there are I mean of course there are metrics available on the effectiveness of communication which are based on psychometric tests and uh, and other quest Q and A questionnaires. Yeah, I mean I do that with the college students when I do sessions in college about uh, when they're facing interviews. That's that's a different thing. But there is one simple thing that each one of us can do uh, on our on a very regular basis from our end is that the best metric to test the effectiveness of communication is to to observe our <clears throat> observe the, the level the the quality of our relationships around us quality of our network around us if our communication is positive we will have a lot of inbound inbound relationships when i say inbound relationships people who want to get in touch with us people who, who are communicating with us on a regular basis our i'm not talking about immediate family and friends who've known us for years i'm not talking about them i'm talking about when we go beyond them so when we are going beyond them and we see how our relation how many of our clients would want to hang out with us for a cup of tea or a drink after hours how many of us invite us for dinner to their place or their child's birthday or how many of us come to our place for dinner or how, or how many of us are only connected to us when we when we are uh, doing business or talking shop the quality of our communication is is measured by the the quality of our relationship that we share with our non family non friends that's the best that's a metric that i personally use at least as far as i am concerned 
is that that uh, and so far it's been very 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 effective for me so that's what i'm uh, sharing from my end here that yes it's it makes a big difference it makes a huge difference if our communication is strong it is empathetic it is uh, it shows the other person that we care about that person then that will always 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 be reciprocated fabulous thank you thank you vinay srinivasan has this question is silently listening to a client also part of the communication process your view huge absolutely huge part of the communication is listening because um, you know uh, now now coming to listening there is a very uh, uh, interesting thing that we often in the communication in uh, domain we often talk about that you know people are we are always listening to we are always waiting for the other person to finish so that we can start speaking that is a very common mindset that we have when somebody is sitting in front of us and talking we are waiting for that person we are waiting for the first gap so that we can jump in and then we can fire a few salvos that's what that, that is a very common mindset that all of us have i myself have had that for quite some time listening should be to be able to understand the person the the person's problem and what the person wants to share what we reply to it is is a subset is of is a by product of what we have listened to if there is no relation between what we are saying and what he has said then that is a colossal failure of communication that person will not be interested in listening to you so that is why when when um, i was in sales earlier when i was i used to go to meet a client um, i would initiate the conversation yes but then i would ask about the person they just sit there and listen that's all just listen so, yes sometimes they didn't get me business which is fine it's it it will translate to business when we build a relationship with our clients the business will happen but the important thing is that when we are talking to a person when we listen to that person's views there is a lot we have to learn about a human being to learn about an individual we are missing out a huge opportunity uh, on knowing that person Uh, when we are when we are just like you know it comes from here and goes from here no it doesn't work it's 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 you it's just waste of time and effort when we are having a conversation let's be in that moment and let's dedicate ourselves to just listen to that person and not look for that one gap to jump in between and start <laughs> <laughs> okay we all do that we all do that i do that i mean <laughs> so we <laughs> guilty as charged <laughs> thank you so much vinay for sparing so much of time it's uh, uh, five past four and we are uh, you know right uh, run, uh, right out of time can i request uh, shobhana the secretary to please uh, propose a formal vote of thanks yeah uh, yes vinay please go ahead just just wanted to uh, share the last slide um, uh, i would love to be connected to all of you my linkedin my instagram everything is vinay pushpakaran without a space in between vinay pushpakaran i would love to be connected to all of you please feel free to connect with me and uh, if there is anything else that i can uh, uh, share or if any questions are here which i which we didn't have the time to answer or address i would uh, love to answer them please get in touch with me on my email vinay at future-impact.com or uh, any of my social media handles i would love to help out how Whatever I can. All the best to to all of all of you out here, and to all of us to tide over this crisis. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you very much. Yeah, please stay on. We uh, Vinay, uh, Shobhana uh, proposes a formal vote of thanks, please. Thank you so much, sir. It was really a very. Uh, it was crystal clear. I would say there was no confusion. It was so clear and uh, uh, prompt for us all of us. It was. we could really everyone every we could see the appreciation so many appreciations coming in in the chat it was very good session thank you so much for uh, taking us down because we haven't uh, heard such a session on uh, <laughs> all the six points were very clear we could relate to it thank you so much it was a wonderful session Thank, thank you. you so much thank you so much for having me over i had an amazing time and thank you for the, the beautiful response that i have received that's really really very encouraging thank you so much yeah we had more than 120 participants listening and they, all of them were happy it was very relevant to our business each one all the business it's relevant it's universal law but still <laughs> for us during this time it's very relevant thank you so much for that wonderful session thank you vinay thank you thank you so much thank you uh, i would love a feedback on any of my social media handles so uh, please do share some uh, a feedback for me on my social media handle i would love that thank you very much enjoy a great day yeah. thank you
Right. And our next session for the uh, Wednesday, the same time, three to four, would be by Ms. Aarti Krishnan. She is a uh, columnist in Business Line and Hindu. She specializes in investments. Most of us know her. We have also read her articles on the print media. We have uh, seen a few uh, speeches also, the presentations also. So we are going to hear from her on the Indian economy post COVID-19. That's going to be the topic. So I request each and every one of you to please join us for the next session too on Wednesday. I will share the details and the link as usual through the email. Until then, bye everyone. Thank you, sir.